Are you tired of playing guessing games with your hard-earned money in the stock market? Well, today's your lucky day because we're about to unveil the secrets to determine whether a stock is a hidden gem or a pricey dud. Welcome to our guide on stock investing and how to spot when a stock is cheap or expensive. Ever found yourself wondering, is this stock truly worth its price tag? We've all been there. But fear not, as we embark on a journey to demystify the art of stock valuation. In this video, we'll tackle burning questions like, how do you know if a stock is undervalued or overvalued? What metrics should you be looking at? And most importantly, how can you make informed investment decisions that align with your financial goals? Get ready to unlock the secrets of P.E. ratios, trailing P.E., forward P.E., and comparing multiples, all essential tools in your investor arsenal. So, whether you're a seasoned investor or just dipping your toes into the stock market waters, buckle up and prepare to navigate the thrilling world of stock valuation with confidence. But before we dive in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join our community of savvy investors. Trust me, you won't want to miss out on the valuable insights coming your way. All right, let's dive into the world of P.E. ratios. You might have heard this term tossed around in financial circles, but what exactly does it mean? Well, think of it as your stock's price tag compared to its earnings. A bit like checking the price tag before splurging on a new gadget. Picture this. You enter a farmer's market and notice two baskets filled with juicy apples. One basket costs $5, while the other goes for $10. Now, which one would you choose? Sure, the $5 basket might seem like a steal, but what if it only contains a few measly apples? That's where the P.E. ratio comes in handy. The P.E. ratio tells us how much investors are willing to pay for each dollar of a company's earnings. It's like peeking under the hood to see if a stock is overpriced or a bargain deal. Let's break it down a bit further. Imagine you're comparing two companies in the same industry. Company A has a P.E. ratio of 20, while Company B's P.E. ratio is 10. At first glance, you might think Company B is the better buy since it has a lower P.E. ratio. But hold your horses. There's more to the story. You see, a high P.E. ratio could mean investors are optimistic about a company's future growth potential. It's like paying a premium for a trendy new smartphone because you believe it'll revolutionize the market. On the other side, a low P.E. ratio might indicate that a stock is undervalued, like snagging a designer handbag on clearance. Now, let's crunch some numbers. To calculate the P.E. ratio, simply divide the stock price by its earnings per share, EPS. For example, if a stock is trading at $50 per share and has an EPS of $5, the P.E. ratio would be 10, $50 per $5. But wait, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Investors also use alternative valuation multiples like the price to sales, P.S. ratio or the price to book, P.B. ratio to gauge a stock's attractiveness. It's like having different tools in your toolbox for different jobs. Think of the P.S. ratio as a measure of how much investors are willing to pay for each dollar of a company's sales. It's handy for valuing companies with erratic earnings or those in the early stages of growth, like a budding artist whose work hasn't hit the big time yet. On the other hand, the P.B. ratio compares a company's stock price to its book value per share. It's like rummaging through your attic to see if that dusty old painting is a hidden gem or just a piece of junk. A low P.B. ratio might indicate that a stock is undervalued relative to its assets, while a high ratio could mean it's overpriced. What does this indicate for our investing decisions, and how do we understand these numbers? Well, it's like deciphering the clues in a detective novel. A high P.E. ratio could signal that a stock is overvalued, while a low ratio might indicate a hidden gem waiting to be discovered. But remember, the P.E. ratio is just one piece of the puzzle. It's like trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle with only one piece. You need to consider other factors like industry trends, competition, and management quality to get the full picture. You see, while the P.E. ratio is a valuable tool for evaluating stocks, it's not without its limitations. For starters, different industries have different norms when it comes to P.E. ratios. A P.E. ratio of 20 might be considered high for one industry, but perfectly reasonable for another. Moreover, the P.E. ratio doesn't take into account a company's growth prospects. A company with high growth potential might have a sky-high P.E. ratio, 
but that doesn't necessarily mean it's overvalued. It's like judging a racehorse solely by its speed without considering its stamina or agility. Additionally, the P-E ratio can be manipulated by accounting tricks or one-time events. For example, a company might report abnormally high earnings one quarter due to a windfall profit or a tax benefit, skewing the P-E ratio temporarily. It's like trying to gauge someone's fitness based on a single workout session. You need to look at the bigger picture. So, while the P-E-E ratio is a handy tool for evaluating stocks, it's essential to use it in conjunction with other metrics and factors. Think of it as one ingredient in a delicious recipe. It adds flavor, but it's not the entire dish. So, the P-E ratio is a powerful tool for investors to assess a stock's valuation. By comparing a company's stock price to its earnings, investors can gauge whether a stock is overvalued, undervalued, or just right. However, it's crucial to consider the limitations of the P-E ratio and use it in conjunction with other metrics and factors when making investment decisions. So the next time you're eyeing a stock, don't forget to check out its P-E ratio. It could be the key to unlocking hidden gems in the stock market. All right, guys, now let's talk about the trailing P-E. Now, you might be wondering, what on earth is trailing P-E? Well, let me break it down for you in the simplest terms possible. Trailing P.E. or price to earnings ratio is a vital tool in an investor's toolkit. It's like a magnifying glass that helps us zoom in on a company's recent financial performance, specifically its earnings over the last 12 months. Think of it as taking a snapshot of the company's profitability and comparing it to its current stock price. Let's put this into perspective with an imaginary company called Tech Genius Inc. Imagine Tech Genius has been churning out groundbreaking innovations in the tech industry, and investors are buzzing with excitement. Now, trailing PE allows us to peek into the rearview mirror and see how well Tech Genius has performed financially over the past year. So, why is trailing PE such a big deal? Well, think of it as a snapshot of the company's recent performance. Just like flipping through a photo album, trailing PE gives us a glimpse of where the company has been financially. And just like spotting a trend in those old family photos, trailing P.E. helps investors identify whether a company's earnings are on the rise or taking a dip. But here's where things get interesting. Remember our pie analogy? Well, just because the pie tasted delicious last year doesn't guarantee it'll taste the same this year. Similarly, a high trailing P.E. doesn't necessarily mean a stock is overvalued, and a low trailing P.E. doesn't automatically make it a steal. Now let's get back to the main theme. Stock investing, how to spot. When a stock is cheap or expensive, see what I did there. By understanding trailing PE, you're gaining insight into whether a stock might be trading at a bargain or a premium. But wait, there's more. Trailing PE isn't just about looking in the rear view mirror. It also helps us project into the future. Just like predicting the weather based on past patterns, trailing PE gives us clues about where a company might be headed financially. Now let's crunch some numbers. Suppose Tech Genius Inc. has a trailing P.E. of 20. What does that mean? Well, it means investors are willing to pay $20 for every dollar of earnings the company generated over the past year. But remember, context is key. A trailing P.E. of 20 might be considered high in one industry, but perfectly reasonable in another. So how can we use trailing P.E. to our advantage? Well, it can help us gauge whether a stock is trading at a relative discount or premium compared to its historical performance or peers in the same industry. Just like comparing the price of that pie to other desserts in the bakery, trailing P.E. allows us to assess whether a stock is priced competitively. But here's the kicker. Trailing P.E. isn't the be-all and end all of stock valuation. It's just one piece of the puzzle, like a single ingredient in that delicious pie. Investors need to consider a variety of factors, including the company's growth prospects, competitive landscape, and overall market conditions. And speaking of market conditions, let's not forget about economic cycles. Trailing P.E. can fluctuate based on whether we're in a bull market or a bear market. During bull markets, investors are optimistic about future earnings, leading to higher trailing P.E. ratios. Conversely, during bear markets, uncertainty prevails, causing trailing P.E. ratios to dip. Now let's dive a bit deeper into the limitations of trailing P.E. While it provides valuable insights into a company's recent performance, it doesn't account for future growth prospects or changes in the business landscape. 
Just because a company had stellar earnings last year doesn't guarantee it'll continue to perform well in the future. Furthermore, trailing P.E. can be influenced by one-time events or accounting irregularities. For example, a company might report unusually high earnings due to a one-time windfall or a change in accounting practices. In such cases, trailing P.E. might not accurately reflect the company's true earning power. All right, fellow investors, let's roll up our sleeves and dive into the world of forward P.E., a crucial metric in the stock market toolkit. Imagine you're a detective piecing together clues to solve a mystery. Forward P.E. is your magnifying glass, allowing you to peer into the future and uncover hidden opportunities. So what exactly is forward P.E. and why should you care? Let's break it down very simply. Forward P.E. or forward price to earnings ratio is like a crystal ball for investors. It provides a glimpse into a company's future earnings potential, helping you to determine whether a stock is overvalued, undervalued, or fairly priced. Think of it as a weather forecast for your investment portfolio. It gives you an idea of what lies ahead. But how do we calculate this mystical metric? Fear not, it's not rocket science. To calculate forward PE, you'll need two key ingredients, the company's estimated earnings per share, EPS, for the upcoming period and its current stock price. Imagine you're baking a cake, and these ingredients are your flour and sugar, essential for a successful outcome. Once you have these ingredients in hand, simply divide the current stock price by the estimated EPS, and voila! You've got yourself a forward P.E. ratio. It's like mixing ingredients to create the perfect dish, a blend of art and science. For example, let's say company XYZ is expected to earn $2 per share next year, and its current stock price is $20 per share. By dividing $20 by $2, we get a forward P.E. ratio of 10. This means investors are willing to pay 10 times the company's expected earnings for a single share of stock. Now, why is forward P.E. important? Well, imagine you're shopping for a car. Forward P.E. is like checking the car's mileage. It gives you an idea of how far the company's earnings can take you in the future. A high forward P.E. ratio may suggest that investors are optimistic about the company's growth prospects, while a low ratio may indicate undervaluation. But here's the catch. Forward P.E. is not a crystal ball. It's a tool, a compass guiding you through the labyrinth of stock valuation. Like any tool, it has its limitations and blind spots. Just because a stock has a high forward P.E. ratio doesn't guarantee future success, nor does a low ratio spell doom and gloom. Investing is an art as much as it is a science. It's about weighing probabilities and making informed decisions based on available information. Forward P.E. helps tilt the odds in your favor, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. Now, let's dive deeper into the nuances of forward P.E. One factor to consider is earnings visibility. How predictable are the company's future earnings? A company with stable, predictable earnings may command a higher forward P.E. ratio than one with volatile earnings. Another consideration is growth prospects. A company with strong growth potential may justify a higher forward P.E. ratio, as investors are willing to pay a premium for future earnings growth. Conversely, a company facing headwinds may trade at a lower forward P.E. ratio. It's also essential to consider industry dynamics and macroeconomic factors. A company operating in a rapidly growing industry may command a higher forward P.E. ratio than one in a stagnant or declining industry. Similarly, macroeconomic trends, such as interest rates and inflation, can impact forward P.E. ratios across the board. Now let's put theory into practice. Suppose you're comparing two companies in the tech sector, Company A and Company B. Company A has a forward P.E. ratio of 30, while Company B has a forward P.E. ratio of 15. At first glance, Company B might seem like the better investment opportunity as it appears to be trading at a lower valuation relative to its future earnings potential. However, before you make a decision, it's crucial to dig deeper. Consider factors like each company's competitive positioning, growth prospects, and management team. Remember, investing is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Take your time, do your research, and invest with conviction. Forward PE, 
is a valuable tool that allows investors to peer into the future and assess a company's earnings potential. By understanding how to calculate and interpret forward P-E ratios, you can navigate the complex world of investing with confidence. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far and want more content like this, comment the word more and I'll create videos in the same vein. All right, guys, now let's move to the topic comparing multiples when it comes to stock investing. We've talked about P.E. ratios and trailing and forward P.E., but how do we use these metrics to compare stocks and make informed decisions? Imagine you're at a buffet looking at the various dishes laid out before you. Each dish has its own unique flavor and price tag. Similarly, stocks come in all shapes and sizes, each with its own set of metrics and valuation. So, how do we know which one is the best value for our investment dollars? Enter the world of comparing multiples. This approach involves stacking up different stocks side by side, like comparing apples and oranges, to determine which one offers the best bang for your buck. Let's break it down in simple terms. First off, we need to understand what we mean by multiples. Multiples refer to ratios or metrics used to evaluate a company's value relative to its earnings, cash flow, or other financial metrics. Think of it as a yardstick to measure how much you're paying for each unit of earnings or cash flow generated by the company. Now let's say you're considering investing in two companies, Company A and Company B. Company A has a P.E. ratio of 15, while Company B has a P.E. ratio of 20. What does this tell us? Well, it means that investors are willing to pay $15 for every dollar of earnings for Company A, compared to $20 for Company B. In simple terms, Company A might be considered cheaper in terms of its valuation compared to Company B. But wait, there's more to the story. We can't just rely on P.E. ratios alone to make our decision. We need to dig deeper and compare other multiples as well, such as price to sales, P.S. ratio, price to book, P.B. ratio, or enterprise value to EBITDA. EV EBITDA ratio. Each of these metrics offers a different perspective on the company's valuation, giving us a more comprehensive picture. Let's explore these additional metrics of price to sales, PS ratio. This ratio compares a company's market capitalization to its revenue. It's particularly useful for companies with volatile earnings or those that are not yet profitable. A low PS ratio suggests that the stock may be undervalued relative to its sales revenue. For example, if Company A has a PS ratio of 1, while Company B has a ratio of 3, it indicates that investors are paying $1 for every dollar of Company A's revenue, compared to $3 for Company B. On price to book, PB ratio, the PB ratio compares a company's market value to its book value, which is its net asset value per share. A low PB ratio may indicate that the stock is undervalued relative to its assets. For instance, if Company A has a PB ratio of 1.5, while Company B has a ratio of 2.5, it implies that investors are paying $1.50 for every dollar of Company A's net assets, compared to $2.50 for Company B, enterprise value to EBITDA, EV EBITDA ratio. This ratio assesses a company's value relative to its earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. It's often used to compare companies with different capital structures or levels of debt. A lower EV EBITDA ratio may indicate that the stock is undervalued. For example, if Company A has an EV EBITDA ratio of 10, while Company B has a ratio of 15, it suggests that investors are paying $10 for every dollar of Company A's EBITDA, compared to $15 for Company B. Now let's circle back to our video title, How to Spot When a Stock is Cheap or Expensive. By comparing multiples like P-E ratio, P-S ratio, P-B ratio, and E-V EBITDA ratio, we can indeed spot whether a stock is trading at a bargain or is perhaps a bit overpriced. It's like shopping for groceries and comparing prices at different stores to find the best deals. We're on the lookout for value, and comparing multiples helps us do just that. But remember, comparing multiples is not a one-size-fits-all approach. It's crucial to consider the unique characteristics of each company, industry trends, and overall market conditions. Sometimes, a stock may appear cheap based on multiples, but it could be facing significant challenges or risks that aren't captured by these metrics alone. 
So comparing multiples is a valuable tool in our investor toolkit. It helps us evaluate stocks based on their relative valuation and spot opportunities to grab a good deal. Just remember to do your due diligence, weigh all the factors, and never rely solely on one metric to make your investment decisions. All right, let's get into the heart of the matter, where the rubber meets the road in the stock market journey, deciding when to pull the trigger on a stock purchase or sale. It's the moment of truth, where all the analysis and insights we've gathered come into play. So, grab your thinking caps, guys, because we're about to dive into the art of making buy or sell decisions in the stock market. Before we dive into the strategies, let me share a story of a fellow investor, Jack. He was a stock picker. He loved to research companies, analyze their financials, and find undervalued gems in the market. He had a knack for spotting cheap stocks that were poised to soar. One day, he came across a company called XYZ Inc. It was a small biotech firm that was developing a promising drug for a rare disease. Jack was intrigued by the company's potential and decided to dig deeper. He looked at the company's balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement. He calculated the company's earnings per share, book value, and free cash flow. He compared the company's multiples with its peers and the industry average. He was amazed by what he found. XYZ Inc. was trading at a price-to-earnings ratio of 10, a price-to-book ratio of 0.5, and a price-to-free cash flow ratio of 8. These were all well below the market and sector averages. The company had a strong balance sheet with low debt and high cash. The company had a positive net income and a growing revenue. The company had a competitive advantage with a patent-protected drug and a loyal customer base. Jack was convinced that XYZ Inc. was a bargain. He decided to buy 10,000 shares of the company at $5 per share, investing $50,000 of his savings. He was confident that the stock would soon appreciate and reward him handsomely. A few months later, Jack checked the stock price of XYZ Inc. He was shocked to see that it had plummeted to $1 per share. He wondered what had gone wrong. He searched for news about the company and found out the reason. The company had announced that its drug had failed a crucial clinical trial. The drug was found to be ineffective and unsafe, causing severe side effects in some patients. The company had to halt the development of the drug and write off its research and development expenses. The company had lost its main source of revenue and faced a lawsuit from the patients. The company was on the verge of bankruptcy. Jack realized that he had made a huge mistake. He had overlooked the risks and uncertainties involved in the biotech industry. He had focused too much on the multiples and ignored the fundamentals. He had bought a cheap stock, but it was also a worthless stock. He decided to sell his shares and cut his losses. He sold 10,000 shares of XYZ Inc. at $1 per share, losing $40,000 of his investment. He felt a pang of regret and frustration. He learned a valuable lesson that day. He learned that not all cheap stocks are good investments. He learned that he had to look beyond the multiples and consider the quality and growth of the business. He learned that he had to be careful and diligent when picking stocks. He determined he would never make the same mistake twice. He decided to improve his stock selection skills. So as you navigate the stock market, take note of Jack's story and remember to tread cautiously. Now, let's now dive into strategies for making prudent buy or sell decisions. It's all about balancing risk and reward like a tightrope walker teetering between fear and exhilaration. You want to maximize your potential gains while minimizing your exposure to losses. Sounds simple, right? Well, not quite. One of the first things to consider is the company's financial health. Think of it as conducting a health checkup on your investment. You'll want to assess key metrics like revenue growth, profit margins, and debt levels. Is the company consistently growing its top and bottom lines or is it stagnating? Are profit margins healthy, indicating efficient operations, or are they razor thin, leaving little room for error? And what about debt? Is the company drowning in debt or does it have a manageable debt load? These are all critical questions to ask yourself before making any investment decisions. Next up, let's talk about valuation. This is where things get really interesting. Remember our old friend, the P.E. ratio? Well, it's back, and it's here to help you determine whether a stock is trading at a bargain or a premium. But don't stop there. 
dive deeper into other valuation metrics like price to book ratio, price to sales ratio, and EV EBITDA ratio. Each metric offers a unique perspective on the company's valuation, helping you paint a more complete picture. Compare these metrics to historical averages and industry peers to gauge whether the stock is cheap or expensive relative to its peers and its own historical levels. But wait, there's more. Consider the company's growth prospects as well. Is it poised for explosive growth or is it stuck in a rut? Look for signs of innovation, market expansion, and competitive advantage. Is the company investing in research and development to stay ahead of the curve or is it resting on its laurels? A company with strong growth prospects can command a higher valuation, while a company with stagnant growth may be stuck in value trap territory. Now, let's talk about market sentiment. This is where psychology comes into play. The market is driven by fear and greed, with investor sentiment swinging like a pendulum between euphoria and despair. Pay attention to market trends, analyst reports, and news headlines to gauge investor sentiment. Are investors bullish on the stock? driving prices higher, or are they bearish, selling off in droves? Understanding market sentiment can help you anticipate market movements and position yourself accordingly. Timing is also crucial when it comes to buy or sell decisions. They say that timing is everything in life and the same holds true for investing. Keep an eye out for market trends, economic indicators, and geopolitical events that could impact stock prices. Market dips and corrections can present excellent buying opportunities for savvy investors, while market rallies may signal it's time to take profits off the table. Next, let's talk about risk management. Investing is inherently risky, and there are no guarantees of success. That's why it's essential to diversify your portfolio across different asset classes, industries, and geographies. Spread your investments like a well-tended garden planting seeds in different soil types to minimize your risk exposure. And don't forget to set stop-loss orders to protect your downside and preserve your capital. So making buy or sell decisions is both an art and a science. It requires careful analysis, intuition, and a healthy dose of patience. By considering the company's financial health, valuation, growth prospects, market sentiment, timing, and risk management, you can make informed investment decisions that will serve you well in the long run. What a roller coaster ride through the world of stock valuation. We've covered everything from PE ratios to comparing multiples, empowering you to make informed investment decisions. Remember, while these metrics are powerful tools, they're not without limitations. As legendary investor Warren Buffett once said, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Remember, you can enjoy any audiobook for free by clicking on the link below the video. You can also find a list of suggested books and where to buy them below. The purpose of this video is to educate you on various aspects of investing and not to give you any specific investment advice. Investing involves risks and uncertainties, and you should always do your own research and consult with qualified professionals before making any financial decisions. However, past performance does not guarantee future results, and you should always consider the risk of investments before putting your money at stake. If you find this video helpful, I recommend you watch my next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, feel free to leave your comment below. I appreciate your support, and I hope to see you in my next video.